and sisters, and uh, happy Sabbath. May we please close our eyes for opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you that we can see smiling faces this morning, bright and beautiful people, Lord. And thank you for also bringing us safely through another week. As we lift your name in praise this morning, we ask that you bless it and sanction it for your glory, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. For our first team, we will sing him number 308, Holy Thine.
draw me nearer.
The praise team will now come up as we sing Hark the Voice of Jesus Calling. Number 359. Can the church please stand? Good morning, church, and a happy Sabbath. The, the Pathfinders have prepared a skit for you. They have been working very hard and long for this day. Please enjoy. And put Jesus to the test. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? How does it read to you? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And who is my neighbor? A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers. And they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, the priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. <coughs> Life. 
Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil on wine on them, I'm and put him hurry. on his own beast and brought him to inn and took care of him. I'm in a hurry to help the priest. Return, I will repay you. We will ensure that we will take care of this man. Okay, thank you. I'm going to be waiting outside. On the next day, he took out 2,000 rents and gave him to the innkeeper. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? The one who showed mercy toward him. Go and do the same. So who did, who do you guys think did the best? The priest, the Levite, or the Good Samaritan? The Good Samaritan, right? So the lesson here is that we must always take time for our neighbor, right? Thank you, Paul Fanders. You might take your seat. Church, that in a nutshell is our, our Sabbath school program for the day. Um, just before we we give the lesson study ample time to dig into the word and the lesson that we've studied for the week. Um, just a few announcements. The, the children will have the usual classes on my right, for those that's visiting with us today. On my right, there will be children classes. Um, just before we do that, we've got the missions offering. Right.
pray. We close our eyes and bow our head for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us safely today. Thank you for helping us with our nerves and our and our skit that we did today. Please bless the money that the church has given to us today. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath, church. Thank you. We are so grateful that you came to you come to support us. Uh, in the moment in time, we are going to the pathfinders are going to leave for uh, Raima Musa. Uh, we want to thank the church for the money and the donation that you gave us. We managed to get uh, 50 packs for the kids there by Raima Musa. So may God bless you and may He help you. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, the present worship team will sing as we separate for classes. The pathfinders will leave for the hospital and then we'll come back. Thank you so much. We will now stand as we sing him number 625, Higher Ground. <laughs> Can the church please stand?
Cool. Morning. Can you hear me? If you heard me, then you would say, Happy Sabbath. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. I hope you will be blessed. Thank you for the visitors. We have some visitors with us. Good to see you. And we hope that you're going to be enjoying uh, the study of God's word. This is a rare um, um, uh, arrangement in the Adventist ch church. Um, you find this rarely in any other church when time, focused time is made for the study of God's word. And um, so I, I, I'd like to start off by saying, um, I've made up my mind to take this lesson very seriously. What about you? If you know what the lesson is about, you would um, uh, concur with what I, what I just said. Uh, we are, this is the, the penultimate uh, lesson uh, in, 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 the, in this quarter. And uh, people have generally said that they've been richly blessed uh, through the study of God's word. And uh, I, I, I hope that that happens to be the case for all of us. Um, that we, we came uh, on the understanding that we're going to acquire a new dimension of spiritual growth this morning. So let's just pray for a minute. Dear Lord, <clears throat> the lesson study is about to begin. Your word is about to open. We're living in a country where we are at least enjoying freedom of the, that. Your word is readily available, and particularly in your house of worship, there is a deeper understanding of the dynamics of Christian living and salvation. So may we enter into the joy of the Lord this morning as we make time again for God and his word. In Jesus' name, and the church says, Amen. Amen. What's the lesson about today? What is the lesson about today? Dying like a seed. Like a seed. Um, total surrender. Um, uh, yes, uh, it's submission. It is surrender. It is dying. <clears throat> it is willingness to listen. It is self-reliance that is in question today. So... Let's uh, read the memory text. Most assuredly, uh, John 12, 24. I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. So those of us who have um, exposure to growing and um, farmlands and gardens, um, we know the importance of this particular text, um, that a seed must do what first? It's, it's, it's only one death. I want to hear a lot of death. The seed must do what? Die first, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, does the seed know where it's going to fall into? Why do you say no, Sister Lorraine? Let's have a mic here, folks. Are we, are we micless or mic full? The mics are in front here, I think, Brother TJ. Thanks for coming up. There's another mic this side. Thanks, Sister Lorraine. Good morning. The seed does not know where it's going to fall. It is dependent on the sower. So the sower takes it and he scatters it. Right. And sometimes even he doesn't really realize that it's not falling on fertile ground. Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. You got a point, Brother uh, William, on that. The seed does not know where it's going to fall. And it doesn't know what happens to it afterwards. But as long as it falls on ground where it will die and then to, germ to germinate and bring forth more than one seed, but many. Okay, Brother Adam, yeah. There's another mic here. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother William, uh, you say the seed has to die. What about the seed that the sower uh, 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 sowed that fell on dry ground? Hard soil. It died without soil. So it didn't die in the right environment. But Brother Adam. Um, brother, the main thing for me here is um, to give up control. Uh, when you study the lesson, yeah, that's, you know, you, f you find out that's, that's the main thing. And this is not easy. When you get to the point of trusting God wholeheartedly, um, then you'll be able to give over. We need to submit. We need to give over to God without question. The dying spoken of here is dying to self. Right. Um, the old man must die so that the new character can take its place. And this does not happen overnight. It takes time. Um, this is sometimes also the same as being in a crucible. Okay. The thing is also the seed goes into the ground and after a while it germinates. Right. The first thing that grows is the root. Okay. Um, the thing is also it has to feed on the nutrients in the ground. Uh -huh. It should also be the same with us. Yeah. We should be rooted in the, in, the, in the word. Our spiritual nutrients come from there. All right. And then growth will take place. Okay, uh, so uh, um, uh, thank you for that. Um, how long uh, must the seed wait? <coughs> yeah, take the mic, Adam. I want to hear how long must the seed wait? The thing is, the seed does not know how long to wait. The thing is, you know, it, it takes time. It's, and that, that's God's time. Okay. <coughs> so um, it's, not, it's not the seed's time. The seed can't say, you know, I want to I grow now. All right. So the seed uh, falls, according to the text, into, uh, <coughs> uh, into the ground. It doesn't have a GPS. It doesn't know where it's going to land. <coughs> it just lands. Then, once it's landed, it does not have a watch. It does not have a calendar. <laughs> it doesn't uh, determine... Well, uh, uh, two more months, one more month. You know, the, 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 the farmer has a, a general idea when he can expect a harvest, but not exactly because he doesn't know exactly what happens uh, in the soil. And then uh, while it waits, <clears throat> it gets onto the soil, it dies, and it waits. That is the most difficult part of being alive. That waiting. That waiting. You know, um, um, the, um, the, the Christian journey has been of such a nature that um, giving up, giving up is second nature to us. I've had enough. I've tried long enough. I did not sign up for this. Then you give up. I have a, a, a picture that was uh, uh, done for me while I was in office. See this picture here? What's, what's, what, uh, uh, what's in that picture? What can you see? Bonsai tree. <laughs> uh, it's not the bonsai tree. What is it? Yes, what is it? It's an acorn. <laughs> and inside the acorn is what? You must understand that. Inside the acorn is the tree. And uh, if that acorn has been willing to fall, 
Uh, just, just uh, can, can we just move up to the next uh, slide there, please? Okay, so there's a beautiful bowl of, of acorns. Looks like they are polished. Um, uh, uh, they, they go onto the coffee table of the master, but it, it, they're useless like that. But the acorn that becomes like that, the acorn that becomes like that, that breaks up, that dies, it eventually produces the next thing. That tree. I want to, I want to before we, we go into the, the rest of the, um, the lesson, I want to read a, a, a poem uh, for you, uh, something that was sung by the King's Heralds long ago. There's a church within us, O oh Lord. Not a building, but a soul. Not a portion, but a whole. There's a church within us, O oh Lord. There's potential within us, O oh Lord. Something stirring within us, O oh Lord. Something straining to give birth, to be visible on earth. There's potential within us, O oh Lord. There's a fire within us, O oh Lord. A new life, a burning, O oh Lord. A fire for new life, combating present strife. There's a fire within us, O oh Lord. There's a building to be done, O oh Lord. There's some building to be done, O oh Lord. Not with steel, not with stone, but with lives which are our own. There's a church within us, O oh Lord. Unless a grain of seed falls to the ground and dies. dies. You've seen that bowl of acorns? I'm afraid, brethren, that's how the church looks. Beautiful. Polished, no trees. Yes, Brother Adam. You know, Brother, the, the lesson brings out if we know what God's will is for us and what is, you know, that it's the best for us, there's a question there. Why do we have such a hard time accepting it? Yeah. Yes, and that's uh, the, uh, it's a very important question. We, we must answer that. I, 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 let, let me tell you where I've gotten to in my personal journey. I'm tired of lesson studies. I'm tired of giving lesson studies. I'm tired of not responding to the call of, I, I don't know, uh, uh, is this a filler up? <laughs> is this a filler up for church? What is it about? Now let's look at, at, a, at the, the, the wonderful example Jesus gave us. And uh, that's a submission for, for service in, on the Sunday's lesson. What, what happened? The, the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Sister, I'm coming to you now. Uh, okay, is, is this a preceding point then? Yes. 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 Right. Um, must I repeat that? Yeah, dying to self begins in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> dying to self begins in the mind. All right. So total surrender yes. to the will of Christ is not just a change in our behavior. Uh -huh. It is a change in our thinking. Yes, absolutely. And we're going to come to that. That's an excellent point. We're going to come to that uh, in, in, to the, in, in the next day's uh, se section. But, but, but just tell us about the journey. There was a decision taken up there yes. in the councils of heaven. Yes. What was that decision? Yeah, brother. What was that decision? The, des the des decision was taken that if ma when man fails, right. Right. we have a plan right. that would bring man back again. And that was 
Jesus made the decision to die for mankind for the sins that man has committed, the second death. Yeah. That he would come and die that second death for all men to be saved. Yeah, but if I if I was Jesus, I would look at my royal robe. I would look at my surroundings. I will look at my presence in the midst of angels praising me night and day. I would look at my exposure to my father. Granted, brother, that is you. Well, hang on now. Yes, of course it's me. It's me. It's but me. It's Christ, me. Christ decided that he would make that decision and to die for mankind, not only for, listen, not for only for you and me, but for the whole world, everyone that sinned. Yeah. Now, I, if if you if you look if you look at that, if you look at that in its totality, one man dying to save a world. Yeah. It's when because what Christ had seen that when he dies, he makes he opens the gate of heaven okay, to brother, everyone. Brother, brother Willie, uh, I, 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 I wanted just to, to come back. Uh, don't go so fast. Uh, uh, salvation is coming. But here is Christ. He is in heaven. The word of God says, he thought it not robbery. No. What, what does he say? He, he thought it not robbery to be equal uh, God. to God. What, 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 is, what is he saying there? Christ gave up his equality with, with the Father. I, I, I think we're saying that too lightly. It's so right. Yeah. He gave up his equality. Yeah. Carry on, Sister Lorraine. No, that's it, really. I mean, what, what more can I say? You know, uh, he, he, he gave up, uh, you know, uh, everything uh, to come down. And I mean, that is really coming down to our level and in order that eventually he may save us. To our level, Sister Lorraine. Brother T.G., you got a point? Yeah, um, I was going to say, in order for the seed to germinate, it first of all has to be separated uh -huh. from the tree. Right, sir. Where the replenishment and the nutrients that it receives comes from. Right. Similarly, when Jesus needed to die, he needed to be separated from that, um, what do you call it? Uh, no. The, the trilogy. Okay. He needed to be separated from the Father. Right. And this is why when he gets to the Garden of Gethsemane, that was the biggest pain because that's when it became crystal clear mm -hmm. that there was potential to be separated permanently. Forever. Forever. So somebody dramatized it like this. TJ, excellent point. Somebody dramatized it like that. That when he left the portals of heaven, you know, there's, there's a song that, that goes this way, he left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny. Twas a lonely hill of Golgotha, there to lay down his life for me. So somebody dramatized it like that, that when he left the splendor, he took off his royal robe and he went, he went to Mars and he says, keep this for me till I get back. And then he, he comes lower down to the earth and, 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 and he goes to Venus and he takes down his crown and he places it there. And he says, on my way back, I want it back. And then he goes to a lower planet and he takes off his golden sandals and he places it there and he says, when I get back, I'll pick it up. He came down, down, down. Somebody s sang this song. Down from his glory, ever living story. 
that's that. He came down and he went right down, right, right down. And he was cloistered in the womb of a teenage girl. Trapped. <laughs> God, the son of God. So, yes, Brother TJ. So, to die is to live. Amen. To die is to live. You've got it there. You got it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, the, the acorn is in the, the tree. Is, the oak is in the acorn. It's in the acorn and, and in you. I, 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 I would like to urge you to embrace what I'm saying now. There is within you a church. There's a church within you. Yes, Brother Adam. Brother, if you look at Philippians uh, uh, 2 there, it says, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, so the rain talked about the mind. But after the mindset, it can't stay there. Yeah. Something needs to happen. You need to change. And the thing is, you know, what changes in us? I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it home now. Yeah. We think about, all the, you know, it starts in the mind, but what changes in us? Our characters. If that is not like Christ, then I'm sorry. Then, you know, you died for nothing. Yes. You're going to stay dead. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, that, that, that's that's uh, uh, very, very clear, Brother Adam. Um, the, 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 your, your lesson study in, on Sunday says you must have the same mindset as Christ. It's the mind, Brother Adam. You're right. It begins in the mind. Doesn't stay there. Let me tell you what journey, what journey it takes. Sow a thought, yeah. reap a word. Yes. Sow a word, reap an action. Yes. Sow an action, reap a habit. Yes. Sow a habit, reap a character. Yes. Sow a character, reap a destiny. It doesn't stay there. It doesn't stay there, brother. Uh, uh, when you finish, then hand, hand it to Sister Lorraine. Um, Short, quick, brother, points. Uh, there's something I would like to bring our minds back to. And I think this is possibly the problem that humanity has today. You see, when God said to Adam, when you eat of that fruit, mm -hmm. you shall surely die. Right. And I think, as, as the, 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 the lesson study, that the, the, the courtly that I have, it says, Adam did not know what death was. Yeah. Because he only realized what death was when he saw the first leaf from the tree. Yeah. Now, the problem with humanity today you know, the, 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 uh, the serpent told Eve, you shall not surely die. And that, that uh, sermon is being preached every day around us. And the, to, to, to prove a point, I've heard at a, at a, at a funeral, it was said, listen, your, your parent is not dead. He's just gone to another room. Now, isn't this the thought that we get right from the Egyptians? When someone dies, especially someone like a king, everything that he had in life is buried with him. Yeah. Now, man has still got that idea. But if you, if they, they, they don't realize the state of the dead, when God created man, he took the dust of the earth and he formed the body. Okay, brother, brother, brother Willie, I, I appreciate that. Let's not speak about the state of the dead now. Otherwise, we'll put the class into another state. Please pass the, the mic on to, to Sister Lorraine to make her point there. Thank you. You know, I think uh, this thing about submission <coughs> all comes back to trusting God. Amen. 
And Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, I think, says it so, so beautifully. Trust in, in the, the Lord, Lord with all, all your and might and lean, lean not on your own understanding. understanding. Yes. In all your ways, acknowledge him yes. and he shall direct your paths. Yeah. If only we would trust God implicitly, how easy our lives would be. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, um, uh, God speaks to Abraham one evening and says to him, I'd like you to take the son, the one you love, and take him and go and offer him up as a burnt offering for me. So Abram went and he took Isaac with him and you know the story. Now this is a young, solid, strong man. Um, and um, he lies on the altar. He sees the knife coming down. Do you think he had the, the option of getting off? Must have. You know what somebody said one day, Brother Adam? He says many times the thing that hurts the heart of God is that many living offerings get onto the altar and they crawl back again. <laughs> I, you know, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and turns back is not worthy of me. So that was a demonstration, and, and, and something died, something died. Did anything die in Abraham that day? Yes, what died? He, he, he himself died. Right. The thing is, you know, Paul said also, this is a, he says, you know, I die daily. Right. And this is a process. Um, while we're talking about this, I'm just thinking, you know, w my question at the beginning was not answered yet. Right. Um, why do we find it so hard to accept, you know, that what God knows is best for us? Yeah. Why do you find it so hard? And the thing is, you know, we, we as you say, we're sitting here like in a bowl with the, as the acorns there. Yeah. We're shining. Shining. You know, we Pol look good. Polished. We smell good. We're yeah. polished. Yes. But the thing is, you know, that's what we do. We yeah. stay in the bowl. Yeah. Now, I, I, why is it so hard for us to accept that God has our best interests at heart? I tell you, I'll, I'll tell you the exact answer to that, Brother Adam. When you and I look in it, each other in the eye after church, we'll know why. <laughs> because it is a matter of looking squarely into the mirror and knowing the man in the mirror does not tell lies. That's that's the why. Um, so um, this is the, um, the, uh, the, my view is that Abraham also had to give up something, <laughs> something major. Yeah, brother, brother uh, Virgil Wright. Yeah, no, no, uh, take the mic, brother. The people across the, across the waves must hear. <laughs> Philippians 2, 6 says he made himself nothing. Nothing. The other versions that says he emptied himself. Yeah. The word empty in the, in the Hebrew is being debated, right? Not even debated. It's being discussed right now by right. Judaism, Islam, right. all the three major religions. And has been going on for 17 years. Islam has an approach, and this was four months ago. Islam says, based on Philippians 2, yeah. the depth of the text is so profound that we cannot even make God's name. Right. In the discussion, not of the word empty, yeah. but in the essence of the text. The question essentially between the three religions is bring your information together is for Jesus to empty himself, for Jesus to empty himself. Yeah. What does that mean? Islam yeah. says we can't even think about that. Judaism says, and thank you that you gave the analogy and the depiction of the acorn, that in every acorn there is an oak tree. Yes. The signature of every living thing is found in, there is a signature found in every living thing. Amen. For yeah. Christ to empty that which is living in him is shocking. How do you empty yourself of everything that is living, that is divine, that is salvific, so that you can come die for vigil? Yeah. 
it, it, it boggles the mind in yeah. the sense. Do you understand what it means? He did not just leave the splendor of heaven. He gave up his own signature. He gave up his own genetic line. Yes. Yes. For you, thank you, Uncle Sam, as you mentioned, as he passed through the planets and as he gave off his, his, his clothing pieces, his everything. Glory. The, the, the one, uh, there's one Christian writer that says, Jesus got to a point where he did not even know if he could re-establish the prophecy yes. that he made in Ezekiel that I will pick up my life again. Yeah. It was so profound. Yeah. It was so great for him. Ellen White says that the unfallen worlds were astounded. Yeah. When the decision was made to rescue man, if we have to get to that point, so my little Jack Russell decides to go visiting and he's gone for two days. I do everything in my power to go and find him because he's naughty. Because I know that this is Jack Russell's behavior. I'm always going to be going where I'm not supposed to be going. But I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go to bed and I'm not going to sleep tonight because... I need to find my dog. Yeah. For Jesus to do that in the sense, not only save you to the utmost or the guttermost in the sense, do you understand that I am prepared to lose everything yep. to bring you back? You, you know, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Vigil. Um, um, and, and, and nicely uh, coupling your, your point with TJ's point there. Um, you know, uh, there, there are times when I do my, I, uh, when, I, when I bath, I, I do my own underwear and I, 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 I clean it and I put it one side with my face cloth and my underwear and uh, then I go to the line to hang it up and, and Hawa being Hawa comes after me and she says to me, uh, just bring it here. And uh, uh, she bring, uh, takes it and then she rings it out. Oh, where do those thin arms get all that water out of the thing that I had already wrung? And she squeezes the water out of it. When Christ was on the cross, the last dredges of blood Amen. were drained from him. Amen. That's why he could have said, it is finished. finished. <laughs> okay. Okay, Brother TJ shows me the time there. Okay, thank you, Brother TJ. Maybe, uh, maybe we should then uh, just end with uh, Samuel. I mean, everyone wants to end with Samuel. Amen? <laughs> Samuel, young boy, brought to the, uh, the temple. Um, uh, he is uh, there with uh, Eli and Eli's two sons, Hophni, Phinehas, wicked, corrupt, but he had the advantage of being raised by a mother lovingly. You know, somebody said, and I, I made a statement before, so I, I'm saying this is probably the fourth time you have to make a statement six times before it takes, takes my brother. And this is the statement. When you raise your children, this is what Hannah did. When you raise your children, you must teach them the notion of instant obedience. Why? The writer says, one day God will speak and that child must respond immediately. Unfortunately, when I look at my life and my response, I'm, I'm so Hophni and Phineas-like. Stubborn. They, I mean, they just in the face, in the face of God, and righteousness and his word, they just went against everything that was right. Brother Adam, last point. Thanks, brother. Um, I'd just like to, you know, um, bring this, this point also to, 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 our, to our minds. Have you ever heard that still small voice? Yeah. yeah. You know, the Holy Spirit and yeah. ignored it. Uh -huh. um, there Tuesday says, willingness to listen. Yeah. And... Uh, I like what the, the lesson writer brings here. You know, he, he, he refers to Charles Stanley. Yeah. I actually listened to this man once. Yeah. Um, he's not a Seventh-day Adventist, but, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a child of God. Uh -huh. He talks there about neutral, neutrality. In other words, um, you know, your mind must be neutral yeah. in order for you to, to hear. Yeah. Um, neutral means that, you know, you don't go forward, you don't go backwards. Absolutely. You stand where you are. Yeah. Moses, was to, Moses, Moses said to the children of Israel, stand still. Yeah. Also, you know, numerous books in the Bible 
people were told to stand still. Yeah. Um, God says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, Brother Adam, the, the, the trouble with me is I get into my car. The first thing I do is what? Yeah, put it in gear. Start it, put it in gear. I want to hear what the news is. <laughs> put on the radio. When I come home at night, what do I do first? On the lights, on the TV. We're not able to deal with silence. We're not able to cope. Because it is in the silence that God speaks. Can I close this lesson study? And can I read one verse of the poem I read to you? The last one says, There's a church within us, O Lord. Not a building, but one soul. Not a portion, but one whole. We are your church, O Lord, in the world. I hope we go home and something will have happened this morning. That we are willing to die of the things we have. The same way as he did. I want us to close our eyes. Is there a mic? <laughs> Sister speaking about 10 more minutes. And that's rough. You know, when you come to the end, you come to the end, eh? Okay. There's a mic, there's a mic. Yeah. 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 Right. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Amen. You know, Vigil, uh, pl please pass the mic to Sister uh, Lorraine. Let me tell you something that disturbs me. I am uh, among, once upon a time I was in the youth, today I am in the, 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 the aged. Do you know what bothers me? Is that it seems to me that God is bypassing the Eli's of our church. And giving the message through the Samuels of the church. A little boy, innocent did not even know how to get up that morning and how to go over to Eli and just to say, this is what I heard. But one thing was clear to Eli, I have been bypassed. God forbid. God forbid, Sister Lorraine. You know, I believe that, that God is speaking to individuals um, all the time. Yep. It, it is us that don't hear him yep. because we're not listening mm. out for him. We're yeah. so busy with our own interpretation of how things should be and because, because we're so used to being yeah. so self-reliant yeah. yeah. that we forget to rely on God. Yeah. So uh, we have to be still, Yes. as you said. Yes. We have to be still and then maybe we will hear him speaking more clearly. Yeah, yes. Absolutely, Brother Adam. Um, you know, when God says, be still and know that I'm God, I must actually be neutral enough. Um, you don't have your own agendas then. Yes. You, you don't go forward or backwards. Yeah. You stand still and you listen to him. Yes. Um, your mind is not preoccupied. Amen. You are focused. Yeah. Um, then we are ready to listen. And then God also, you know, 
God being God, he doesn't force you. Yeah. You know, he still leaves that power of choice to you. Do you listen to me or you don't? Yeah. And the thing is, you know, I like this, 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 this day's uh, uh, lesson. You know, it, it says their willingness to listen. Yeah. How willing am I to listen to the Lord? Yeah, take the, take the life of Saul. Saul is in a quandary, Brother Adam. Saul is in a quandary. Um, um, the, 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 the Philistines um, uh, and, the, and, and, and the army with which he is contending, contending is, is about to rout them. He, um, he identifies 3,000 people. He takes 2,000 and he gives 1,000 to, to Jonathan, his son. And Jonathan, his son, routs the army and uh, uh, the, the, the enemy and, and brings them into submission. Then the Philistines regroup and they say to themselves, this paltry nation who gives them the audacity to defeat us, and they regroup. They regroup, and they form a formidable force. And they go against Saul and his army. As they go against Saul and his army, um, Saul says in his heart, not to worry, not to worry. We are going to conquer. Why will we conquer? Ah, Samuel the prophet said that... Uh, when you go into battle, wait for me for seven days. I will come up and offer to the Lord. I will come and, and, and offer to the Lord. And when, I, when I've made the offering, you will conquer. Then it became too much for Saul. He could not wait because the reality has dawned. The reality, unemployment, reality, divorce, reality, unhappiness at home, reality, problems in the church. If the reality has dawned, then our humanity jumps in. And we take decisions that God had no design for us to take. You know, there are some decisions that you and I take that God wants to have the preserve of, of his alone. So Saul says, you got to offer. I'm coming to you, Cyrus. You've got to offer. You've got to offer because the enemy has now approached. Yeah. And he offers. He offers. On the seventh day, when Samuel is about to arrive, and Samuel gets there and says, what have you done, Saul? I waited. I listened. That's what your lesson says. I listened, I heard, I thought, and I acted. I did what was logical. Understand one thing, that whatever is logical in your mind, whatever is logical in your mind, when the boss says, just until 7 o'clock on a Friday night, don't listen. There's a voice that is higher than that, because you will hear a voice within you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. So Cyrus. I want to latch on to what Sister Lorraine said about individuals are being spoken to. And um, you asked a question some time ago. What is wrong with the church? Why aren't we going forward and doing God's work as we should? And I, I could have answered you then, or I had an answer, but you know what? I just felt I can't say it, because we are really just believing people. If I speak up and say this, I saw this, or this happened to me, then I'll be seen and not a message from God. Okay. And that was that went through my mind. Uh -huh. And I often think about it, should I have or should I not have? Because uh, you asked that question, and I've had a dream um, quite a while ago and it was just before someone that we know or we used to know passed away, a young person and I was shown clearly not that particular person but someone we also know well preaching mm. and um, I was wondering w would people believe me or take notice of what I'm saying when I do and I kept quiet and this person was a very, is I think a very flamboyant person and he was striding up and down as he was preaching and he was dressed particularly how he is normally dressed in a leather jacket and a very uh, expensive white shirt 
and preaching his heart away. And yet at the same, in the, and it was like a minute's dream or two minutes perhaps. And I looked to the right and I saw, I saw this man at a slight distance, like as in front. And I saw Jesus standing there and as we picture Jesus. And uh, he, he had tears coming down his face, listening to this man. His heart saw, if that's the picture I got, his heart saw at what this man is doing because he's preaching, but he wasn't preaching from his heart. And that is the lesson I got from that dream. And I woke up also crying, you know, and I'm saying to Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And that woke me up, and, I w and that was my little dream. And that day I thought, would the church believe me or take notice of me when I speak about it? And I kept quiet because in my heart I knew they'll think I am perhaps showing off or, you know, putting myself on a high plateau of my relationship with Jesus. Yeah. But I'm saying it now anyway, whether you believe me or not. But that was the message I got from Jesus about this, our church and perhaps our preachers even, you know, that they're preaching themselves. They uh, exalting themselves and not Jesus. Can I wrap up your point with what is uh, alluded to in the lesson? Psalm 20, I think it's verse 7. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But I trust in the name of the Lord. Have you been blessed this morning? Let's pray. Yes, Lord, there is a church within us. There is an acorn that carries an oak. May we never fail to realize that God wants to magnify the humble persons we are into becoming oak trees in the journey of of many people. Bless us. Honor yourself through us. We love you, God. Show it badly. But Lord, really, from sinful lips, we really love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. What did Jimmy Felix used to say? You can go home now. And some way, Wednesday or Thursday, going to kick your dog's neighbor, your neighbor's dogs.
Good morning, everybody, and a happy Sabbath to all our brothers and sisters. For our first hymn, we will be doing hymn number 422, Marching to Zion. The glory song. Trials are wrong. 
Pastor Sam. Good morning, church. Good morning. I think that was much, much better. It's so lovely to see all of you. I see a few smiles. I think a few more smiles will do. Um, will help me, because I'm a little bit shaky here. Yeah? Um, as, I, as I pan my vision across um, the church, I see quite a few visitors, some regular visitors. Some of the guys I haven't seen in a while. Um, Brother Pennington, I see at the back there. Um, Vigil, so glad, to, so good to see you. And, um, wow. Guys, have you heard Himna today? You know why she's singing so well? 
Her uncle is in church, oh. Dr. Julius. <laughs> Welcome. Then um, there's two others that also signed the, 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 the guest book. Um, Solo Mosholi and Lundisani Ngube. I hope I did that justice. And then all the rest that's regular and non-regular visitors, please feel welcome. At this point, I want to welcome our online viewers as well. Please take part in our, our program, and I hope that you will feel God's uh, presence with us. Um, praise and worship team, do you have a song that we can just welcome everybody? Um, can we do smile? Uh, I'm going to take a leaf out of Elder, Elder Myron's book and can we hug each other? Not hug each other. Can we greet each other at least? <laughs> hug is the right <laughs> I think it's appropriate for us to stand for this one. So, yeah. Can we stand? Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. Why don't you greet somebody in Jesus' name? Why don't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name? Everybody smile, Jesus loves you. Everybody smile, Jesus loves you. Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile. Church may be seated. Lovely. Please be seated, everyone. It is good to see everyone here today. The church is, is, is really packing up, and we can see that we're getting back to normal. Yes, amen? I thought I would hear an amen, but okay. All right. But it's really good to see smiling faces, no mask, and and so many people in the benches. That is great. We do have a few announcements. Um, Sister Anne, where are you? You have some announcements. We'll start with you, and we won't end with you. Good morning, church. Oh, that sounds a whole lot better. Firstly, I do want to say a, thank, a big thank you to all the church members that have contributed towards the um, toiletry drive. This is for the Women's Rehab Center. So thank you for your actual donations and your cash donations as well. We've got two more weeks to go, okay, before we actually hand over whatever we've collected thus far for the rehab. So on the 2nd of October, I'd like all the ladies to take note of the day because we'd want you to join us on the day, right, to hand these over, spend some time with the woman at the rehab, and just make them feel special while we do this. So um, we've taken stock of what we have. Church, there's a few items that we are still short of, and I want to communicate that to you so you can hone in on the specifics and uh, make sure that we try and fill up those packets, and we've got two more weeks to do that. So what do we need? We need some face slots, we need some lotion, we need some toothbrushes still, um, we need some sanitary towels, soap we have a lot of, thank you for that. 
Um, so those are really the specifics. So I'm urging you all again to continue to support the cause. And uh, I'm looking forward to those donations next Sabbath, if you can. For those who want to make cash donations, I've got the blue envelopes with me. You can raise your hands. I'm sure the Pathfinders will be happy to let you have those um, so that you can, uh, your cash donations are most welcome. So if there's anybody at this time that wants to raise your hands, you need a blue envelope for the cash donation next week, happy to hand it out to you. Thank you. I see a couple. Okay, great. I'll get the envelopes to you. Thank you, church. I was getting a bit worried there, you know, to know if we will leave Sister Anne hanging, but then I started to see hands. Very nice, very nice, very good. All right. And then we have um, another announcement. As you know, we have the picnic today at the Amarantia Dam, and I'm told to say that it's on the dam side and not the Rose Garden side. Am I correct? All right, all right. So right after church, we're heading over with our picnic baskets. I hope that you brought a lot of food so that if we have visitors, you know that uh, walking by, they will just stop and they can have some food with us. All right, amen. Didn't hear an amen, but I know you did. All right, all right. Then our prayer meetings continue on Wednesday night at 7. Um, next Wednesday, we will be having some of the young people Carlisle, Timothy, and Moses doing a um, uh, uh, prayer meeting. So let's let's tune in and, and you know worship with them. Um, and yeah, that was the toilet drive. And then today, I, I don't think that the Pathfinder Club has mentioned it, but today is Pathfinder Day worldwide. It's not just Pathfinder Day at Bosmond. Hence, we're all dressed in our uniforms. You know, if you're a master guide, Brother Moses, and it's Pathfinder Day, we wear our uniforms, yeah? All right. And, and, and worldwide, we're having Pathfinder Day. So our Pathfinders are here um, to take the service today. Yes. And if you guys do not know, Brother Moses is a master guide. There we go. All right. Amen. All right, and then we have some birthdays. We had, we had some special people this month. We had Charlene Pennican. Is Charlene there? All right, all right. Okay, and, and Brother Clint Victor. Hannah Baines, I think it was Wednesday. There's Hannah over there. All right, she's smiling. Um, Chandrel Hendricks, <laughs> Ellen Lambert. Lambert, okay, we had a birthday today, very good. And then Robin Moses, no, not here today. And Emma LaRue, where is Emma? Is she outside? Okay, so here, here's what we'll do. We'll sing a happy birthday song, but what we want to do is we want to ask all the birthday people that are here to stand so that we can see you and we can celebrate with you. So Anna, you can stand. All right, uh, Sister Pennington, you can stand. I think I saw Ellen Lambert here. Ellen Lambert is over there. Sister Ellen, you can stand as well. Yes. Huh? Yes, stand. Is it your birthday? No? Okay. All right. Don't disown your birthday. If it is, it is, eh? It is. All right. Okay, let's sing happy birthday. Where's Emma? There's Emma as well. Okay. These are our birthday people, and they celebrated this week. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear members. Happy birthday to you. God bless you too. God bless you always, God bless you and keep you, happy birthday to you. Shall we bow our heads as we bless the birthday people? We thank you, Lord, that you have given another year to each and every one whom you see standing and those that are not here. We know that they are grateful for life and health and strength. And we ask that you will bless them once again in this upcoming year. 
Keep them safe, keep them healthy, keep them strong, and keep them prosperous. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We will now have our offering video played for us. And um, as, we, as we look at the sentiments of the offering, let us dig really deep into our pockets on this Pathfinder day and give. I noticed this morning the, the um, uh, what do I call the deaconesses, they moved very quickly. So the instructions I gave to the deacons this morning is that move slowly through the aisles <laughs> so that people will get time to make up their mind, even if they didn't intend to give. Your lingering will compel them to give. So they will be moving slowly, coming around. Let's have the video. Sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Even while knowing all things, God's goodness leads him to act most of times as if he were a blind giver, not focusing on the nature of the recipients or even the outcome. He gives out of love. He even demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In contrast, we are inclined to give exclusively to what we see and whose outcome we can control. As a result, some have withdrawn participation in tithe and regular offerings when they cannot see the direct effect of their contributions. Others have resolved to support only local projects rather than a worldwide mission far from their eyes. This is not the blind giver attitude. We have a glimpse of what can happen when God's people reproduce the blind giver attitude. Have you heard about the hope of the Amazon, a floating church? Most of us do not know it, and even fewer have visited this boat church. However, this project has materialized through the blind giving mindset. In 2016, God's children from all over the world pulled funds together to support the 13th Sabbath projects, and one implemented project was the floating church, the hope of the Amazon in Brazil. The result is inspiring. In the first 12 months of operation of the boat church, 286 people were baptized and three churches were planted in 2017. Pastor Reno, who served on the Hope of the Amazon, said, the boat church is God's way of saving people who have been forgotten by political, economic, and health systems. God, our example, is involved in a global mission toward those we see and cannot see, toward those we know and do not know, as we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, called Promise, we have another opportunity to demonstrate the same global mindset as our God. May we put our desires last and God first. As the Pathfinders help us out in taking up the offerings and the tithes, we will sing Give Thanks.
church please rise as we sing praise God from whom all blessings flow Blessing us with smiles on all our faces. Um, as the day continues, bless the offering and bless all of us here today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we come to the garden of prayer, I know that sitting within our midst, there must be someone who would like to share the goodness of God with us. It's now testimony time, and we will have two testimonies. Each one of us may have a testimony in our hearts, but it's always good to share our testimony to encourage someone, because your testimony tells them what God is doing and what God can do and what God wants to do. So if there's anyone in our congregation that would like to share. All right, brother. Good morning, church, once again. Good morning. Um, I just want to thank the Lord for, for having his people in the church. Amen. As we were planning for this day, you know, it was shocking for me how the church responded. God has his people in Bosman Church. Amen. And I want to thank the Lord. Because I think uh, those who went to the hospital, they testified how people were grateful for what we did. And mm. it's all because of you. There's a God in heaven. Thank you, Bosman Church. I love Bosman Church. Thank you. All right. All right. We wish we could have gone along, but you know, we hope there are videos that we can see there and experience. Is there someone else? This is probably the only time I don't call out people during lesson study, yes, but testimonies. Brother Vigil, we'll wait for the mic so that those online can hear your testimony and they can be blessed as well. My father's sister made a decision when she was a young woman to walk away from the Lord. As a result of that, she gave birth to my cousin. Mm. She met a gentleman quite a few years later in her life. The decision between the two of them was not to get married. He's at Helen Joseph at the moment. He's 92 years old. Mm. The disappointment he experienced from the Christian community drove him, he says, to Islam. Mm. He was told on Tuesday morning that he has a few hours to live. We didn't go, and I like what Martin Luther says, we must not go to the doors of heaven beating it down with our prayers. Mm. We need to be very clear and circumspect. The family rallied at the age of 82, 92. He's an old man, he's dying. Lord, let your will be done. I spoke to him on Thursday evening. Mm. He was almost in his comatose state. Yesterday, my cousin calls me from work. She's in tears. She's, I don't know if she's jumping on the desk or what, maybe, but she was ecstatic. My cousin's name is Joy and she's a Catholic. And she says, my father has made a decision to accept Jesus in his mm. life. I said, Amen. those were not the words. What exactly did he say? She said, my uncle, your uncle said, he accepts Isa, that's Jesus, in Islam, yeah. as his personal savior, as the Mahdi, Amen. the Messiah. Wow. As a family, we realize that most likely our uncle will die. 
might be the will of God that he dies, mm. but that we live in the understanding, the world that Jesus, I speak in Arabic, that Jesus comes soon and takes us all to that place called Jannat. Mm. It is our understanding that Jesus moves mysteriously in the lives of our individuals. Amen. That despite the fact that the Adventist church has so many deaths, so much pain, the Lord is alive. He's still doing his thing. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Praise team, can you sing a song as we will kneel for prayer? Now, dear Lord, as we pray. Before we begin to pray, I would like to admonish the church just once more that as we go into our conference session this weekend, starting from this afternoon, let us pray that the Holy Spirit takes over every single proceeding as we go from today on to tomorrow pray for each and every one there that we will remember this is god's church let us pray we thank you our heavenly father that you have seen us during this week and you have been there with us during this week we thank you for your everlasting mercy. We know and we acknowledge that we do not deserve an ounce of your mercy. Yet still, you have given gallons of it every single day. And so we thank you. We thank you for your love and we thank you for all of your blessings. Blessings that sometimes we don't even acknowledge and we take it for granted. We thank you today. Lord, as we come before you, we want to pray for the session that's about to happen, the conference session that starts today. We pray for the delegates. We pray for those that are monitoring uh, the proceedings we pray for the attendees all help that as we interact with each each other that we would see brothers and sisters we would see red blood flowing through our veins not our temperaments not our skin just brothers and sisters in Christ Help us to understand that the service that we are going to nominate people for and select people for, it is for service, not for status. Help that at the end of it all, those who are selected realizes that like the lesson said today, they must die 
to self, to be in service. And so send your Holy Spirit there with us, Lord, and we know you will. We pray for the sick at this time, Lord, our sick members at home. You know the illnesses, you know the pains, you know the sufferings. Heal them, O oh Father. We pray for our senior citizens at home, Sister Anne, the Dixons. We pray for them that in these ages, these, this age, at this age, they will still hold on to you. Those of the senior citizens that I've forgotten, Lord, it is by no means that they are forgotten, not by any one of us. So be with them as well. We pray for the sick gentleman, the, the, the dying gentleman that we heard the testimony today. We are so thankful that you are not a God that is governed by time. It may have taken 92 years, but it's done all the same. And he has accepted your son as his personal savior. If it is your will that he rests in peace today, tomorrow, the next day, save his soul, O oh Lord, because he has reached out to you. We pray for the speakers today, Lord, the Pathfinders and the leaders of the Pathfinder Club. It has been a challenging year for the club, but they have kept pressing on. And help them today as they speak on behalf of you that you will take the nerves away because they are speaking for the greatest master guide ever. The master guide that made this universe. And when he speaks, he speaks with power. And now he wants to speak through them. So help them not to be nervous, O oh Lord. Bless us and keep us all. In Jesus' name, amen. The honor is mine today to introduce the platform. Uh, as you can see, we have um, Dominic, Pathfinder Dominic with us. She's going to be our first preacher. And then uh, we have Councillor Timoth, who will also be our second speaker. And then our Deputy Director, Director Christo, who will give us uh, the sermon and the conclusion. Uh, the one who is speaking now is uh, Elisha Kahe, your director. Yes, uh, thank you so much. So, um, for can someone tell me the theme of the day? The theme of the day. Change the world. Change the world. As we start our sermon, uh, just giving the introduction to, to our sermon. Change the world. When you think of changing the world, wha what comes... What comes to your mind? How are we going to change the world? Isn't it so? How are we going to change the world? And hence, the title of our sermon today is Change Your World to Change the World. Must I say that again? Change your world to change the world. 
That's our title for today. Let me see those who brought their, their Bibles to church. Can I see? Higher, higher? Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I see, I see. Bosman is a, is a church of book, ne? Okay, so uh, our text of consideration today, we are going to take um, Esther chapter 4, verses 14. Esther chapter 4, verses 14. I will read in your hearing. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time like this. The book of Esther is quite an interesting book. It is the only book that we know in the Bible that didn't mention the, the name of God. When we read chapter 1 of the book of Esther, it says, Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over in 172 provinces. So in chapter 1, we are being introduced to King Ahasuerus. But let me just give you the background before the King Ahasuerus. This is the time when we have the children of Israel in captive. Are we together, church? Yes. yes. The children of Israel were in captive. Now, before Ahasuerus, there were two kings before that. There is King Cyrus. And Cyrus did something that I have respect for him. He gave a decree to allow the children of, of Israel to go back to their land. The pen of inspiration says that uh, only a few take heed of that. They didn't want to go home. They wanted to stay in exile. Few years later, we have Darius as a king. And the, 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 the mercy of God, you know, God has his love towards his people. Even if we astray from him, he always finds a way to come to us. Through prophet Zachariah, he pleaded, he pleaded with the people to say, go back to your father's land and rebuild the cities. But no one wanted to go. Only a few again went back to the land of their fathers. God, in his mind, with the love that he had for his people. He foresaw the danger that was going to fall on the children of Israel. You know, one thing I like about the book of, e of Esther is that it's, it's a prophetic book. Because what is stated or what, is, what we are given in the book of Esther is the same what uh, uh, John the, the, the Revelator says. That the time of trouble shall, what? shall come. The dragon was, what? was angry with the, what? with the woman and went to fought war with the remnant of his church. This is the same what is happening in the book of Esther. So now, we are now by chapter 1, where we are introduced by king, uh, to King Ahasuerus, who is now fulfilling what God has saw, or what God uh, has seen in, 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 in the future. So now, we are having the children of Israel facing the time of crisis. They had two prophets who gave them opportunity to go back to their land, but they didn't. Now Ahasuerus is the king, and we know the story from chapter 1 up to chapter 4. So the verse that we read, our main verse, uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 14, it introduces to us, this is Mordecai telling uh, Esther, when he, she was the queen now, to say, you must stand up. So for this part of the day, our message as uh, Dominic is coming to the podium, our message for today is, if you want to change the world, there is seven keys that we have prepared for you. Those seven keys are going to give, is going to give us the method, the way in which you can change the world. When you're talking about your world, you're talking about those who are around you, those who come into contact and you have an impact in their life. So how are we going to change that? I'll invite Dominic to the front.
Good morning, church. I will be speaking about Esther. Self-pity. Let's stop self-pity. Believing that you can't do something. Or always have an excuse not to achieve it. It is the most common thing today. We pay so much attention to what we don't have that we lose sight of the opportunities that we are presented to us. The Bible says that Esther was an orphan. She had grown up with an uncle. Even with her limitations, she kept moving forward. And you can do too. Esther 2 verse 7 says, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, whom he had brought up because she had neither mother nor father. This young woman was also known as Esther. Esther had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as her own daughter. When her father and mother died, Pathfinders, Esther did not receive the blessing of having her parents alive. She was adopted by her cousin and with his guidance, she began to face the challenges that life put before her. If you are short, tall, brown, white, straight hair, wavy hair, thick hair, different hair, very intelligent, a, a little slow to learn, very cheerful, very quiet, with your parents or without them like Esther. In any case, feeling sorry for our situation will not get us out of the situation. We have no excuse for not getting ahead in life, no matter what difficult you are getting you are going through to change your world and the world around those. You must trust this powerful verse of God. Isaiah 43 verse 6 to 7 says, Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory whom I formed and made. Remember that God called you, created you and formed you. That gives you all the value in the world. Amen. Can you say amen for what God did? Amen. Where's God's grace? Esther 2 verse 9 says, She pleased him and won his favor. Immediately he provided her with the beauty treatments and special food. He assigned her to her seven female attendants, selected from the king, placed and moved her and attendants into the best place in the harem. Esther's grace is not due to her. It comes from God. Uh, partly, Esther's inner beauty was greater than the physical one. Amen. People don't want to be with the conceited. It is the humble who manage to impact and change many lives. Amen. God looks at our hearts. Amen. Being obedient always blesses. Esther had not revealed her people and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. In the first beauty contest, that the word of God mentions, a decree and a obedient, obedient lady appears. Indispensable qualities to change us and change others. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Here's the four, verse 10 to 14. Again Esther spake unto Hathath, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come into the kingdom, into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house. 
more than all the Jews. For if thou holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? God puts us in the right place at the right time. Isaiah 55 verse 8 and 9 reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We are to trust God's ways and not our own. He has a plan for every one of us. Serena and give all to him, because the outcome we have in our minds is not the is not always the one God has. It was no coincidence that Esther was selected to be queen. She had a mission to fulfill with the power that came along with being queen. She too probably did not know her mission. And it is not until we meet Haman <coughs> that her mission is revealed. The king appointed Haman to one of the highest positions in the kingdom and demands that everyone should bow to him. Mordecai refuses, and as a result of this, Haman convinces the king to create a decree where all the Jews in the kingdom are to be killed. The king at this point had no idea that the queen he had married was in fact Jewish. Is, this is where God's plan for Esther comes into play. Esther decided to tell the king of her ethnicity in order to persuade him to reverse the decree. Did you know that if the decree were to move forward, the lineage of Jesus would be at stake. Could you imagine? All the teachings that are so important in this religion we have. I once heard a pastor say that without the doctrines of Jesus, it is as if you are taking the muscle out of Christianity. Now we see a grander image. The one mission that God gave Esther is a part of Christianity as a whole. I say again, trust in Jesus' ways. His ways are higher than ours. Like Esther, God has a plan he has created for us. And although it may not be as good or as bold as Esther's, it is important that we trust in God's plan. Every, fa every family member, every friend, every neighbor, every fellow student, and every coworker that God allows to be a part of our radius of action has been placed in that hour so that we can impact the life for him and bring about positive change. We have arrived for that hour. And God has placed us there for a reason. Amen. Thank you. Wow, aren't we proud of, the, uh, of Dominique and Timothy? Um, they really did very well. I thought I would hear a bigger amen than that. Amen. Just a little bit of, of, of background, I think, that, that will bring into context um, what what Dominique and Timothy highlighted here was that Esther was a very, very young girl. Um, scholars reckon that she was between, and, and, and there's various uh, thoughts on, that, uh, on this, but the point is she was young. Uh, they reckon she was between 14 and 17 years old when the decree went out that um, virgins should be sought to be the new queen after the queen Vashti was banished from, from the kingdom. Imagine yourself at 14 years old being in, and this was for, for all pur purposes, intents and purposes, a beauty pageant, and you being chosen as a finalist in this beauty pa pageant. 14 years old, wow. Even 1920, that's young too, right? Part of this beauty pageant, and I must be vulnerable here, um, while studying, um, rereading uh, the book of Esther, and there's a lot of, of information I discovered um, in the first two chapters, rich with, 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 with a lot of information there. And in fact, I found out, and I never knew this, uh, as I say, I, I'm vulnerable right here, that they partied for seven days there's no party like the Persians. <laughs> they can party for seven days. In fact, no one drank out of the same cup. Every cup, it was made up of, out of gold, and every cup was different. Imagine that. 
And on Wednesday, I discovered something very, very interesting. All these virgins that were chosen um, to become, to be potentially the new queen, was sent for a 12-month beauty um, project, um, as it may. They were sent to, um, for six months, or, or, or this, this 12 months were made up of six months being concentrated on um, their skin and everything that goes around with uh, beauty. Um, and then the latter uh, six months was on uh, protocols, um, palace uh, protocols and, and, and so forth. And I think this was purely because of what happened to the previous queen, where she refused the king's request. So they obviously didn't want a similar occasion to happen. I like names, and I like knowing to, uh, to the, the meaning behind someone's name. So Esther's Jewish name means myrtle or myrtle leaf, right? Um, and that was obviously changed to Esther, which possibly was derived from the, the, one of the, the religious figures in Persia called Ishtar, right? Um, which means star or heavenly body. But just go with me for a, for a moment here. If you consider the fact that they went to, to on, on, on a 12 month um, beauty camp, for, for want of a better word, um, part of the last six months was that they had to work with um, plants that, uh, and, and cre create salves and, and ointments that would be sweet smelling so that when they come in the presence of someone, that their, 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 their body odor would not offend them. Now, if you consider Hadassah, which is um, Esther's um, Jewish name, meaning myrtle, a leaf, a plant, she had to work with plants. Um, and plants like camphor, myrrh, rose, saffron, sandalwood, do you for one mo moment think that these chosen virgins had to work with plants to show their worth? Because surely there would be palace attendants that would see to their beauty regimen. Surely there was something behind this. And as Dominique said, that she had an inner beauty. Esther had an inner beauty. She found favor with those that were in charge. I'm sure that they could see how she worked with the various plants and solves. Let me just uh, digress here. Um, I did botany at, at university. And in our third year, we, we had to extract uh, the oils out of, out of plants to create fragrances and, and scents and oils. It's not an easy thing. And this is with modern equipment. Imagine the tediousness of extracting the oils out of these plants to create salves. I'm sure there were few virgins that just gave up. Why must I work with my hands if I would be the queen one day? Can you see where I'm going with this? Sometimes, and this is an Esther and Mordecai moment, sometimes our, our opportunity is disguised in something that's tedious. We don't want to do things that is tedious and you know, we don't see the end result. But sometimes the way we do things speaks volumes. A story has been, is told of a, a lady walking along a deserted beach in Spain. And as she walked, she saw in the distance a young man. And as she got closer to the young man, she saw that he, he was picking up something and throwing it back into the sea. And when she came closer, she actually saw that she, he was picking up starfish. And this confused her, because starfish, you know, it's, it's, it's a spot of, of nature. Um, and, and, and she approached him, and, and intrigued and curious, she asked him, um, what are you doing? And he, he told her, I'm returning the starfish to the sea. Now that the tide is low, it has left all these starfish 
on the beach. Low tide is a natural phenomenon. And possibly this was um, a, a low, low tide as we, uh, as we get you know, those, these extremes, low, low tide and high, high tides. Possibly a low, low tide. But there's something that stands out to me. This was a sandy beach. And normally, starfish do not like sand, the environment. They like rocks and tidal pools. So something, and, and, and um, starfish is one of those early indicators that something is wrong in the environment. And if something goes wrong, they would then try and leave the environment that they're in. So I'm sure this is what happened here. Something changed in their environment and they moved from their safety out to the beach, putting themselves in danger. And here comes our, our, our uh, motto and, and our theme for the, for the day. I'm returning the starfish to the sea, he said. I do not want to allow them to die from a lack of oxygen. The lady said, I understand what you're trying to do, but there must be thousands of, of starfish on, on the beach. And he said to her, well, for this one starfish, it matters that I change his world. As director mentioned that uh, Esther is one of those books in the Bible that God's name isn't explicitly mentioned. Yet, God's DNA is all over this book. In, in actual fact, director, there's another book that uh, God's name isn't uh, mentioned. Song of Psalms. Uh, Solomon um, also does not explicitly mention God's name. Yet, when things get tough, when God doesn't seem to be around us, he's there, right? When, when we don't feel God's presence, that's the actual time when he's close. Mordecai ad admonished his cousin to take action. In actual fact, he told her that possibly you were meant to be in the palace for a time like this. This is your moment. Step up. Be an instrument of salvation. It's the 9 verse 1, and I read in your, in your hearing. Now, in the 12th month, on the 13th day, when the king's command and the edict were about to be executed, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews had hoped to gain power over them and slaughter them, it happened the other way around so that the Jews themselves gained power over those who hated them. Be an instrument of salvation. Esther put herself in danger. She told her uncle that, yes, I will do as you said that I should do, and if I perish, I perish. Instrument of salvation. It's an example of what God can do when we follow God's plan. He can change our lives. He changed Esther's life from an orphan to a queen. He can change us from a coward to a brave Christian. He can change the circumstances and save lives through our actions. I would like to, to at this point, encourage the church to be an instrument of change. Change your world by changing the world. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to dig deep into the Bible and specifically the book of Esther. Thank you, Lord, for, for bringing forth these jewels, Lord, and, and, and reminding us that when things seem to be at the lowest, you are there right beside us. Thank you for that promise, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can rely on you. And as we go forth during the course of the Sabbath day, would you be with us? And whatever we do, 
May it be to the honor and glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. As the um, present worship team uh, come to give us our closing hymn, we just want to thank the Lord for such a Sabbath. As we go for lunch, let's remember that uh, we must change our world so that we can change the world. God bless you. We will now rise as we sing in number 213, Jesus is coming again. Can the church please stand? Father, for reminding us, Lord, that your return is around the corner. We do not know when, but we do know that we need to be ready. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that you are coming again. Help us, Lord, to be ready to meet you in the clouds of glory so that we can make sure that our calling and election is sure. Be with the pathfinders, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've used them in a wonderful way today. I thank you, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
be seated. Before uh, we will now have our clo our closing song as we walk out. But the members, the Bosman baptized members, we would like to ask you to remain as we read out the offices for 2023. Um, this will be the second and final reading. So the Bosman baptized members, if you can just remain behind after the procession has walked out. As we fell out of the church, we will sing in number 430, Joy By and By. Five two four. Okay, we'll do that one side by side. Yeah. 